Hey everyone! So, coming at you with a video today, one of the few videos that I've actually had planned for my vacation, which I am now on. Good times. So, I wanted to talk about why I even got into Warhammer, what I, why I love Warhammer so much. Now, I've always been, like, a big fantasy and sci-fi fantasy nerd. Um, I used to, I, I still kind of am absolutely obsessed with Star Wars. And I am one of the forever DMs for d and I've also developed my own D&D system. <laughs> like, it's everything. I've done, I've gone hardcore on creating this stuff. And... It's, it's a few tiers of an experience how I got into 40k in the first place. Years ago, I remember my cousin, he collected some Warhammer and he had the rule book for Warhammer. So the name for Warhammer 40k was always right here. It was always in the back of my mind. And then, what sparked my curiosity in it was, oddly enough, Flash Gits. Quite a few Flash Gits video actually show them using Black Templars in their videos. And I'm like, wow, like I couldn't pinpoint them. I'm like, I'm fairly certain that's Warhammer. And I had no idea anything about Warhammer at the time. No idea. I'm like, I'm fairly certain that's Warhammer, though. So I ended up looking it up, and turns out I was right. And, oh boy, did I fall down the rabbit hole. <laughs> I started looking into the lore, the miniature, like, I was, this was, it was at the beginning of 8th edition at the time. Or a little bit in, like, a few months into 8th edition at the time. <sighs> just, just been no looking back. <laughs> it's just been constant lore and stories and theory planning for Warhammer. Everything. But the reason I think I love Warhammer so much is because it is hand... it is tailored to someone like me. This is the ultimate sci-fi setting. Somehow, way back in the 80s, these guys who created this, they knew what they were doing. They made an entire, started creating an entire sci-fi lore that was open to interpretation. That not a lot was super set in stone and there was a lot of room to add your own homebrew stuff, your own custom stuff. And that's the thing I love about it so much. It is so customizable. If there's something in the lore that doesn't exist, you can make it. So, when I decided, yes, I'm going to do this, first thing I said was, okay, I'm going to create my own Space Marine chapter. I like the Space Marines. I like the way they look. They have the whole new Primaris line they're coming out with. I can't think of something more fitting than me, someone who's just entering the game during, or start just starts paying attention to the game in 8th edition, to... Collect a Primaris only army. I'm new, they're new, it just seems fitting. And I, lo I love the Primaris models, I really do. They're so fucking good. <laughs> they are. Especially compared to the old ones. Sorry, people who like the Firstborn Marines, nothing against them. But like, it's just the Primaris stuff looks so much cooler. But. Yeah, so I decided right off the bat that I was going to be making a custom Space Marine chapter. It's everything I wanted. I get to create my entire custom army. Um, when With me making a lot of D&D &D systems and everything, I am actually overly organized with my planning and my organization of everything. I with When I would create worlds, I would create entire political structures and military structures within the world. And then I find out 40K has this thing called the Codex Astartes, 
which is literally the kind of bullshit I would make. <laughs> so I'm like, this, this is perfect. This is perfect. It's everything I need. So that's why when I made my chapter, they're salamander successors, but they're codex compliant for the most part. I have them do little deviations. I don't know if I've said this yet, but there are reserve and a vanguard company. But there is no veteran company. There are five battle companies. I don't have a veteran company because it doesn't seem to really make sense. They're a Primaris-only chapter. How many veterans could they possibly have? So I thought it made much more sense to keep them all in the battle companies. And maybe down the line reorganize into a veteran company. Just food for thought. That I might do later on. But yeah. And then I started uh, listening to some of the audiobooks. I started right from the get-go with Horus Heresy, Horus Rising, False Gods, and um, Galaxy and Flames. Which, oh, they were so good. Particularly the first one. The first one was really good. Because you know Horus falls to chaos, but like you see what he's doing. It's like, oh my god. You're rooting for him. You want him to be the good guy, but you know that's not how the story goes. But anyway, that's not how I'm here, what I'm here to talk about. It's It was just such a... Like, the, it's a very in-depth universe with a lot of great characters, settings, and structure to it that is completely open to customization and homebrew and fanfic and whatever. It's, it's a litter and it gives me something artistic I can do with myself. I used to be a musician, not going to go into it, but I'm not anymore. I can, I physically cannot be, but this gave, it, it gives me all the art, artistic form, artistic expression that I want. And all the deep, rich lore I want. So, needless to say, this is the perfect hobby for me. I can't imagine anything better. But, that's all I have for today. Um, stay tuned tomorrow. I'll probably have another video for you. But in the meantime, thank you all for watching. And I'll see you next time.